Number 8. Lost Nazi Treasure For decades, stories of a secret stash of Nazi loot have run rampant throughout the treasure hunting community. But rumors became a reality when members of the U.S. Army uncovered a huge hoard of gold in an abandoned German mine that dictator Adolf Hitler had hidden with the hopes of it never being discovered. When the army advanced from Frankfurt toward a small town of fewer than 3,000 residents, they expected to find people in need of aid. But the residents surprised the troops by spilling a secret. In a nearby abandoned salt mine, Nazis had hidden a treasure, one that had to be seen to be believed. When the troops descended into the mine, they were skeptical until they found a massive vault door inside, one that made the story of the local villagers that much more believable. After setting enough charges to blow open the door, the troops waited for the smoke to clear, and that's when the troops proved the rumor was real. Hidden in the abandoned mine, they found over 8,000 gold bars, 55 boxes of gold bullion, and over 3,000 bags of gold coins. And that's just the gold. The soldiers also discovered 60 bags of silver, a bag of platinum bars, almost 4,000 bags of currency, and a whopping 27 priceless paintings by the artist Rembrandt. Imagine their surprise at locating trunks and containers overflowing with ornaments, money, and gold. The U.S. Treasury Department now estimates the gold was worth almost $4 billion in today's value, with the silver coming in at around $4 million. Talk about a gold mine! Keeping the cash was risky for the Nazis, but it was also a necessity. They needed enormous sums of money to pay for various materials needed for weapons and bullets and to manufacture tanks and aircraft. So they resorted to looting on a massive scale, stealing from the gold reserves of Austria, Czechoslovakia, Belgium, and the Netherlands to fund their war machine. They also stole directly from both private companies and Jews, the very people they persecuted. After transporting all their stolen loot, they stored it in the 2,000-foot deep mine where it sat until the U.S. Army uncovered it, and they later returned it to the central banks in Europe. If you want to get a feel for what it was like for the soldiers who discovered the hidden cache, you can visit the Merkers mines where curators set up replicas of the golden treasure for tourists. Number 7. Shipwrecks in Singapore 33.5 miles off the coast of Singapore, commercial divers made a historic discovery. The divers found two shipwrecks, one dating to the early 14th century and the other to the late 18th century off the island of Pedra Branca. The discovery almost didn't happen when a barge ran aground in the same place where the then still undiscovered treasures were waiting on the ocean floor. With two massive cranes on board, the barge was on the verge of collapsing into the historic Horsbro lighthouse when experts had to blow up the cranes. That's when the divers arrived on the scene to collect the debris, and they made the strange discovery. Instead of steel parts, the group found ceramics and priceless Longquan greenware, a type of glazed Chinese ceramic produced in southern China from about 950 to 1550. After making the remarkable discovery, the group turned the objects over to a group running a maritime archaeological project, who soon realized the entire seabed was littered with ceramic shards. The Singapore National Heritage Board commissioned a series of excavations that had to be carried out one week at a time because the currents were so strong. The team performed salvage work and uncovered the largest haul of rare blue and white ceramics from the Yuan region that anyone has ever found. The discovery was evidence that Singapore was a prominent shipping hub long before Europeans arrived there. The discoveries also inspired the group to look beyond the first shipwreck. They ended up finding porcelain shards at a second shipwreck that dates to the late 18th and early 19th centuries when a ship called the Shah Mun Shah sank during a trek from China to India. Among the thousands of intact pieces, the group collected glass figurines and ceramics. They even uncovered four ship anchors and nine cannons. After hauling the items to shore, preservationists have to put the objects into fresh water to leach out the salt from the items. Only then can they catalog what they found and prepare the items to be displayed in museums for history lovers to enjoy. Number 6. Roman Cash in Britain Imagine looking for a lost hammer in your yard and uncovering the largest Roman-era stash of gold ever found. That's what happened to an Englishman who set out with his metal detector to find the missing tool. After getting a strong reading on the earth, Eric Law started to dig. It didn't take long for him to realize he'd found more than a simple hammer when he brought up shovelfuls of silver spoons and gold coins. Stunned by the discovery, Laws called both the police and the local archaeology society who came out the next day. Instead of digging the objects out by hand, they removed large chunks of earth to keep the precious items safe until they could get them to a laboratory. There, they realized just how massive the discovery was. Hidden underground, Laws had found nearly 60 pounds of gold and silver objects. Dozens of silver spoons and 200 gold objects were among the loot, as well as over 15,000 Roman coins. But the stash wasn't only all about the money. 
the objects gave insight into one of the most turbulent periods in British history when the nation separated from the Roman Empire in 410 AD. Without the ability to radiocarbon date the items, researchers used the age of the coins to figure out when someone might have buried them. Inscriptions on the coins as well as who is depicted on the money helped to estimate their dates. Looking closely at the coins, experts noticed something known as clipping, where the edges of the coins have been removed to make imitation Roman coins. Since this was done at a time after Britain separated from the Roman Empire when the emperor wasn't supplying gold or silver coins to Britain anymore, archaeologists think the coins came from between the years 408 to 409 AD. There's one more piece to the puzzle that gives a clue about who buried the hoard. Experts found the items packed in straw or leather-lined wooden boxes. That, plus evidence of use on some of the silver spoons, leads experts to believe the items were from a wealthy family who kept these treasured items only to bury them carefully for safekeeping. Even though there are still questions to be answered about the Hoxney hoard, the treasure gives a unique glimpse into the past. And if it wasn't for one forgetful man with a metal detector, these secrets may still lay hidden. Number 5. Notre Dame Tombs You don't have to go to Egypt to find ancient tombs. The recent discovery of previously unknown tombs beneath Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris has stunned the archaeological world. While workers were installing scaffolding to rebuild the spire that fell after the fire that struck the historic church in April 2019, they realized there was something buried in a cross-shaped area within the cathedral. The workers brought a special group from the Institute of Preventative Archaeological Research in to look into the mysterious anomaly, and they ended up finding something unexpected. The special group found several tombs, one that held a sarcophagus made from lead under the floor. Experts think the tombs date back to the 14th century. Investigators found fragments of painted sculptures they think were once part of church partitions. Another fascinating discovery was the original cathedral floor experts think was originally dug around 1230 when the cathedral was being built. Using a mini-camera, archaeologists got a peek at the interior of the sarcophagus. Inside, they spotted fabric, hair, and a pillow of leaves placed on the head of the person inside. Experts say that the type of burial was reserved for religious leaders, leading them to speculate that the person inside was once a high-ranking religious dignitary, which means the sarcophagus could belong to a bishop or archbishop. Have you ever been to the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris? What did you think of it? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Number 4. The Holy Grail of Shipwrecks a group of researchers who located the holy grail of shipwrecks using an underwater robot are sharing the news of their discovery with the world, but don't expect them to tell you where the stunning wreck is located. Just off the coast of Colombia, the Spanish galleon San Jose, which was sunk in 1708 by a British ship, was located by a submersible robot. As workers were above the surf, the Remus 6000 went on an important mission, hoping to locate the lost vessel. As the crew huddled around their monitors, something came into view, and when the robot got closer, workers realized there was something very exciting lurking below the surface. But this wasn't just any ship. The San Jose's distinctive bronze cannons, each engraved with decorative dolphins, came into view. The 64-gun, three-mast vessel was filled with $17 billion worth of gold, silver, and emeralds when it was sunk over 300 years ago. Multiple lawsuits are now surfacing over who has the rights to the wreck, keeping the priceless treasures from her cargo tied up in court. No one will see San Jose's loot in a museum until the legal battle is done. Number 3. World War I Coin Stash A family in Michigan cleaning out the house of a relative received a shocking surprise when they found an ammunition round from World War I. They immediately evacuated the house and called the local police, who sent in the bomb squad to take care of the artillery shell. After conducting an x-ray on the round, the bomb squad was relieved to know it wasn't live, but they had news for the family. There was something hidden inside. Upon opening the ammunition round, they found a small treasure of coins and bills that dated back to the 1800s and 1900s. But how did the hidden treasure get there? The bomb squad found the shell inside the home of an elderly woman whose nieces were cleaning out her home. No one's sure if it was the aunt who stashed away the money, but it was an impressive haul once her nieces got over the shock of finding the shell in her closet. Inside, several silver certificate banknotes that dated back to the early 1900s as well as multiple silver dollars, buffalo nickels, and old dimes that dated back to the 1880s make this a nice little nest egg. It might not be worth millions of dollars, but that doesn't make the discovery any less exciting. Number 2. The Staffordshire Hoard A decade after a British man discovered a stash of gold and jewel-encrusted weapons, conservationists are finally closer to revealing the origin of the priceless treasures. Considered one of the greatest British archaeological finds, the collection belonged to a Mercian king who once ruled central England when it was considered the royal heartland of the kingdom. 
Included in the collection of 700 unique items was a stunning large processional cross that soldiers would have carried into battle, but it was a mysterious gold and garnet item that had experts particularly excited. It took years to determine what it was, and now researchers think the jeweled ornament sat on top of a bishop's headpiece. Strangely, both the cross and ornament were both deliberately bent before someone buried them. But why would someone desecrate such valuable objects? Was it to prevent them from being used by someone else? Almost 80% of all the items located were fittings from weapons. 50 of the sword pommels or large fittings at the top of the weapon's handles were made from gold and were extremely rare. In Anglo-Saxon England, gold was more readily available and instead of being reserved only for the weaponry of the king, it was converted into beautiful but deadly objects for the warrior class too. As experts took the last 10 years to study the objects, they have narrowed down the hoard's owner. Some think it points to King Penda, who ruled the area for three decades and defeated various East Anglian kings and monarchs. With no symbols or initials on the objects claiming ownership, researchers will continue to study the items to see if they can uncover the actual owner of the precious hoard. Number 1. Head of Dionysus Archaeologists excavating in Rome unearthed a haunting discovery while digging around the remains of a medieval wall near the Roman Forum. As they carefully removed centuries of earth and sand, they came face to face with the disembodied head of a statue of Dionysus, the ancient Roman god of wine, dance, and fertility. The statue was hidden in the ground, but what makes the discovery so shocking is the one-time piece of art had been recycled and was now being used as a building material. Experts date the statue's head to between the 1st century BC and the 2nd century AD when Rome was at its most powerful. Even as the statue was still partially underground, conservationists were in awe of the stunning depiction of the god. They think the figure's hollow eyes were once filled with glass or precious stones, and they believe that after a thorough cleaning, they may discover some of the original paint conserved on the statue. Dionysus was originally depicted as a mature male with a beard, but in later images, including this statue even after centuries underground, he was usually shown as having very delicate feminine features. Known to the Romans as Bacchus, Dionysus might have been worshipped as early as 1500 BCE by the Greeks. As the son of Zeus, you'd think that he would have held a prominent place among the gods, but the drama that surrounds one of his origin stories made Dionysus a bit of an outsider. His father Zeus seduced his mother Simile, who was immortal, and got her pregnant. Hera, who was not only the wife but the sister of Zeus, got so jealous that she tricked Simile into demanding Zeus reveal his true form to her. Since Simile was mortal, she died the moment she looked at him. Luckily, Zeus saved Dionysus by sewing him into his thigh, where he stayed until he was born. Soon after, he was taken and hidden from Hera's vengeful wrath, where he grew up learning how to make wine. As the last of the twelve Olympians to ascend Mount Olympus, Dionysus was already a little late to the party. But with a mortal mother and his upbringing away from the other gods on Mount Nisa, he was an outsider, a trait his future cult followers adopted with their subversive behaviors. One can't help but wonder if his curious reputation led his statue to be used as a filler for the ancient wall. Hopefully, as researchers study the ancient stone head, they'll be able to shed some light on how it got there. Thanks for watching. Which one of these treasures fascinated you the most? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like these. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.